Also, what was the deal with the ending of the movie? There's no way Toothless would be able to convince, let alone find every dragon hideaway plus the multiple alpha dragon. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a retcon because they sort of wanted to tidy up quite nicely. I'm not 100% agreeing with that because how the whole franchise as a whole set up these dragons is they're very integrated into the world. And you can't just hop remove like a whole order. <laughs> you know, they're kind of like dinosaurs in that sense. Obviously it only got wiped out through its mass extinction. Personally, how I think of the, how the events happen is most of the dragons are already in the hidden world anyway, because there's references to early Jurassic ancestors, which, although I said in the video, Maybe they're related to dinosaurs. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're related to the dinosaurs. They could have just had an early, like a reptile or something um, in the Jurassic era. The Hidden World, right, is said to be basically kind of as big as the Earth, right? But it's just all underground. Theoretically, and ancestors could go there and because it's kind of everywhere, they could evolve into dragons. They have their own separate evolution, fill their own niches. Because to be honest, dragons fill their own niche a lot. To be fair, there's like dragons hunting different dragons, dragons maintaining nature, and this happening in the hidden world makes sense. It's completely separated from the surface of the earth, and it looks like a space where the most thrivable animals need to fly. Eventually, as they expanded, they expanded upwards into the world. Obviously, because they can fly as well. I mean, flying is a huge plus. Like, that's how birds are all over the place. They just fly. Um, so that's how they spread. And even some of the flight this one, the cabin crusher could have came from the underground. If most dragons, if they don't have wings, they most likely have still a way of like navigating either underground. I mean, speed sting is a bit of a different example. They said like only like one group had like more than water. I don't know, it's a thing I need to look into a bit more. Uh, but again, the cavern capture is a prime example. They could have just dug up from the hidden world. Most dragons evolved into the hidden world, then probably got out into the overworld. I imagine obviously Toothless nabbed as many dragons within like the vicinity, pretty much just that archipelago probably. Obviously this takes place after Hatsutrain Dragon 2 and Reach the Edge. Toothless is command of those dragons after the event of 2, where where Drago obviously went round probably the entirety of the archipelago gathering up all the other stray dragons for his dragon army to siege on Volker's Bewilderbeast and, of course, win. And then, you know, hiccup toothless, wham bam, thank you ma'am, leading to the Viking Dragon Utopia in Dragon 3, where they still rescue a few odd dragons from the Dragon Hunters, and then went into the Hidden World because he was the Alpha. But I know there's probably other Alphas and other dragons. I'm assuming, really, that they just went extinct. Pretty much every other clan other than Berkians and maybe a couple of others. Pretty much all of them were hunting dragons. In the hidden world, we see some ward lords. There was one from China, I think, and also Japan. And also a guy named Ragnarok. So he could have just been more of like Scandinavian, because I think Burke is a bit more north of Scotland, I think. A bit more Scottish. So all these cultures, these ward lords, know of dragons, right? But they're already hunting them and killing them because they're terrorizing the people, right? Uh, that makes sense. Like back in those days, we wouldn't think, oh, we want to preserve nature because because that's a thing that we need to do because that just keeps the harmonious balance of the world. They would just say, oh, that's bad. Like, uh, case in point, real humans, we're currently living through another mass extinction, but not because some outside forces or some like natural disaster. It's literally because of us. We are killing so many species of animals, either through our climate change, messing up the planet that way, or even indirectly by just us actually just killing them themselves. Ourselves. Within a few like thousand years, like yeah, all of them just kill all the dragons. But it's a bit hard to say because maybe the dragons didn't spread out that much because maybe the hidden world entrance is like pretty much the only main way they could actually get out of the hidden world. So they're probably quite concentrated around that area of that archipelago. So they, they couldn't, they may not even spread that far into the world. We don't really know. In terms of the world, I can see obviously the dragons wouldn't have all gone into the hidden world. I imagine most of them would have just gone extinct through dragon hunters and just cultures killing them. Um, obviously everything in the archipelago around Burke and everything probably would go into the hidden world because of Toothless. And most dragons already lived in the hidden world anyway. Well, even then, like some dragons even naturally migrated there. Like the Drago's Bewilderbeast naturally went to the hidden world anyway after it got defeated. So I don't know. But it's just like they have a weird natural like inclination of where just know where to go. Cause, yeah, because it's a bit weird because there's uh, the Vanaheim. The Vanaheim seems very integrated to their to the dragon culture, if you'd say. A lot of dragon species go there when they're about to die, which is interesting. And it's probably kind of feasible in all honesty. Well, not every single dragon in existence goes there to die. A couple of species and sort of specific ones. So a theory is the dragons that go there to uh, pass away probably ruled under that original bewilderbeast that we see on the island. 
you know, they go back to their original ruler. But, of course, if they find a new alpha to follow, uh, they'll probably just obviously just follow them. Like, obviously, there's still weight in weird inconsistencies, like I say, you with the bones. It's a bit odd there are no fossils, at the very least, of the dragons found at the present time. I mean, yeah, I know they're trying to relate it to our world, but it's probably not one to one. So I imagine either in that world, they either just find the fossils and think they're dinosaurs. The idea of, oh, dragons, what are they? They never existed is a bit of an impossibility because we would have found evidence of them even if they did spread out a little bit they, we would have found evidence of them at that point but i can see like nothing can zephyr not knowing about dragons because obviously everything around them probably would have would have gone they probably wouldn't have strayed too far from burke anyway from new burke at least because obviously the best way to travel is with dragons and they don't have them anymore so they have to rely on boats and boats take ages in race to the edge it took a week from burke to the edge just on boat so i imagine they could put pretty like the odd dragon around especially the real rare or mysterious ones like the cavern crasher wouldn't really surface that much i imagine that probably but even then cavern crasher would die out if there's not any dragons to eat their eggs unless they're natural food source then they would just die out naturally so there's a mixture of humans killing them humans killing them inadvertently so at least in, within the immediate area there pretty much be no dragons Although a headcanon explanation is that perhaps Toothless's rule reached the entirety of the archipelago. It seems a bit outlandish considering Night Furies don't have such a loud roar. But maybe it's an alpha exclusive abilities like the mind controlling. And we see this effect in Race of the Age with the King of Dragons calling all available dragons to help. And the ones we see are literally across the entirety of the archipelago. So perhaps the big call at the end is a message to every single dragon within the radius to head home. And maybe Toothless is seen as the king, king of dragons, the ultimate one, because he was in the hidden world for like five minutes and all the other dragons were like groveling at his feet. It's just like a, an immediate, oh, we support you. <laughs> so perhaps other alphas would listen to him. I don't know, the dragon-like hierarchy is a bit weird and never really explained because they probably changed it quite a bit from the original film where it probably makes more sense because there's probably an alpha dragon per region and control an X amount of dragons around that area i don't know <laughs> this is me rambling at this point so that's how i've justified it in my head even though i'm not the biggest fan because i do think dragons will be very integrated within the world but i've thought about it a lot as you can very much tell but that is also kind of my job that's how i sort of justified the the weird bit of the weird ending that kind of half doesn't make sense but maybe for thinking about it a little bit more there's a thing there I guess. But before I end the video I do want to preference this that I do really respect Dean DeBod's decision to end the series and at least give the fan base an actual conclusion and although the ending isn't perfect I'd rather this compared to the franchise keep going on and on and just degrading in quality over and over in time. But with all things considered it's not the most backward and out there decision to make. If you know this world well enough you can kind of justify it. But yeah thank you for watching TTFN to off now. Thank you.